We right. all kind of have stories that we tell ourselves about what's going on about something. And the other person that we're communicating with has a completely different story. And so you have to kind of take that into account whenever you're, whenever you're taking in a message. And oftentimes, almost always, the, the reality is um, the person communicating with you does not have all of the information. And so the best thing to do when you receive a message that you deem as being perhaps negative, perhaps combative, mm -hmm. is to respond with curiosity. And um, what you will most often find, and this is why I say like, like default to good faith. This is the online trainer show, trainer show, trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. Carolina. Oh boy. I, I went to the bank today. Oh, sh okay. To prepare for my Mexico trip. Oh and, uh, no. I have bricks of money. Ah, <laughs> <of> all money. <laughs> like all of that is like five Canadian dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's close to 5,000. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, ship it my way. I'll, I'll count yeah. it for you. And I'll take care of it. 70,000 pesos. Oh, nice. Yeah, how to, Very cool. how to shoot a rap video. Uh, let's start the episode in a in a minute, though. I need to get a coffee. Is that is that cool? That's uh, you guys cool. just talk amongst yourselves. Mm. We, can, we can put this on the air. I mean, it's probably going to be better than whatever. <laughs> else. Um, I'm just going to so you guys can talk amongst yourselves. Uh, we're, we're we're in between topics today. We're... Yeah, so I think I think we're going to focus on. Um, like when we can kind of tell stories of like when we've had like a client get upset with us or have like a negative experience and how we turned it around into something positive, like finding opportunities in negative situations. I feel like part of what we could talk about too with this is do we actually know that they're upset or are they just like a bad communicator? Mm -hmm. um, that's there you go see i can actually contribute to this all right well that's my, probably my, the best place to start is that figure out my, if they're actually upset or a shitty communicator and then if they actually are transition into storytelling then my unemotional cold exterior uh might actually be able to contribute <laughs> something in this episode where we're talking about caring about other people <laughs> this is exciting i was i was thinking about something actually guys can i talk to you about what i was thinking about um, this morning, I took I took a morning off this morning. It was really nice um, just to spend some time with Allison because Calvin was at our parents. And we just like read books, and just had a, a slow morning with each other during the week, which for those of you who are parents of young children know that it's like a miracle for that to happen. And, um, and so I was thinking about something and I'd love to tell you about it. I was thinking about um, how with every single thing that we take for granted, somebody at some point was the first person to do that thing and how unbelievably funny that is. Like, what? think about think about the first person to like see a banana in the jungle. <laughs> and was like, and was like, yo, I want to eat that. And just 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 visualize it for a minute, right? Like they bit into this thing that's like phallic, first off. And then they bit into it with the peel on it to figure out how to eat it, right? That's one. Um, but then, but then you can you can go you can go deeper, and it gets better as you go deeper in this. And I'm gonna go I'm gonna go much deeper. Does, Guys, I'm, gonna it, go, I'm gonna go super deep. Does um, does it get better as you well, go deeper? I was, I was thinking about like smoking things, so like smoking <laughs> cigarettes. Like oh my God. somebody at one point has tried to smoke <laughs> literally everything. Oh and, and and then can you imagine the dude in the tribe where they're like, yo, we're gonna go go smoke that plant. Go like like Jim's dead. Like he smoked the wrong plant. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then and then Jason, whose turn it was to smoke the tobacco plant, was like, there was a lot of trepidation. You know what I'm saying? And then and then he smokes the tobacco plant and he was like, yo guys, I feel pretty good. It's, this is, it's, I, it's, no, what? I will one up you. How the heck did somebody figure that beaver anal glands are great for vanilla flavoring ice cream? 
what who discovered who how exactly what how it's real it's real it's an ingredient called castorium and it is added to fake vanilla flavoring like in ice cream sometimes with blueberry ice cream as well and um it's made of beaver anal glands okay. you try and explain that to me please okay. so so <laughs> that what? brings up so what we we talked about ingestibles and things that people smoke but it goes deeper than this <laughs> Who was the first football player to smack another football player on the ass and say, good play? <laughs> How did like, that become a bonding thing? <laughs> like somebody in the 1950s oh, yeah. <laughs> was just like, yo, that was a good touchdown and just smacked another guy in the ass. Like what happened there? Yeah. What was and then that the other moment? guy was like, oh, I guess this is what we do now. I don't know. Like, all right. It, and then it an caught upper. on. Yeah. <laughs> So how many, Where? how many random different times did one football player smack another football player in the ass in different circumstances for it to reach critical mass and become a commonly acceptable thing to do? That is an excellent question. <laughs> we Where ask I all the best questions in, the, in this podcast. That I not say. the funniest skit, though, <laughs> of just like... <laughs> The funniest comedy or improv skit, just the first person to do things. I feel where, like could be where, just where, where am I even at right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm rarely lost on this podcast, uh, but I got to tell you, I'm a bit out of sorts. Like, think about, I, think about how deep this question goes. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just don't even, I don't even know where I am right now. First of all, oh, here's the train. Yeah, I'm, you're, I'm you're, be you're, beside a, you're beside a train. I must, <laughs> I must be at home. Um, <laughs> the beaver anal glands thing, that's, not, that's, that's something that I never needed to know. Like, <laughs> you're like welcome. It, I'm not it, asking Reddit to draw that one. Right, right. like, yeah, yeah. What's Send in the, your artwork. <laughs> yeah. Your in, best artwork of beaver anal glands. No, don't do that. Don't do that. In, in Indonesia, there's like a specialty type of coffee that some animals poop and you actually story. like blew it as coffee oh, yeah God. i didn't yeah. even try it we were there we were like in the town that it was made and uh, and it's super expensive but the same thing like not only did somebody decide to taste this animal's poop it means that somebody at different times has tried to not only taste different animals poo but like brew in coffee yeah that's an extra step right it's right. not just like i'm starving this is what i eat because that's all there is like no let's find the best method for right. preparing this poop <laughs> well, that's the thing so who was the first person to do this that's what i want to know and it's not it goes so much deeper than consumable so if you see something that you think is kind of funny, listener, then my suggestion is to actually create a scene. This is your creative writing experiment for today. <laughs> actually sit down with a notebook and write the story of the first person who discovered or did that thing. <laughs> and you will just laugh. This is so wildly much. inappropriate podcast behavior. <laughs> Well, not yeah. really. I mean, Carolina made it inappropriate. I, I, um, I was, what? I was appropriate. <laughs> Whoever tasted beaver anal glands first made this inappropriate. <laughs> and, you know, and I, and I hope my silence is not an indication that I'm complicit in what's going on. Here. Like this, this, I have nothing to do with what's happening now. I'm, I'm, I'm seconds away from logging off. <laughs> what was the, what was the topic again? I can't remember what Amber said. No, nobody's listening after this. Like. The, we don't, we don't need a topic anymore. Like the, the podcast is over. Show, show's done for the day, sir. You know, you, you've ruined, you, both of you've ruined it. Uh, and, and Amber, I'm holding you accountable for not pulling the plug on the whole thing up to this point. Like, I know you have recording privileges. I saw John has been give you recording privileges. You can hit the stop record, but we're talking about situations where we've had negative, perceived negative experiences with clients and how we turn that around. Jonathan, and I, I can't believe that I'm saying, I can't believe I'm the voice of reason here today, first of all. I feel <laughs> uncomfortable in the position. But Jonathan, <laughs> you indicated that you like to start by talking about whether or not the person was really a displeased or if there was just a poor line of communication. Perhaps they're not a, an eloquent communicator. And again, I'm shocked by how I'm pulling this podcast back on the rails today. <laughs> Don't put me in this position again. I don't like it. I don't want to be here anymore. It's uncomfortable <laughs> to be the most reason here. 
we've confused the <laughs> listeners for the day. Like it's it's way off it's way off the rails. Um, this this is not normal. Right. I'm so uncomfortable right now. I'm so <laughs> uncomfortable right. So so Jonathan, let me defer to Keto because maybe she can clean this thing up. <laughs> Keto Keto, what's going on with you? Like any anything significant happening? Did we miss anything? Um. So I guess. I mean, why not? I already like tell you everything about my life that I shouldn't tell you. But one thing that I discovered this past week that I found hilarious, because let me start this by saying it is not true. Um, but apparently there is a rumor that I am pregnant because oh, really? why? Yeah. Right. Because now suddenly because of who my partner is and, mm -hmm. you know, if he's a more of a public person and then I guess that means that people are heavily invested in your reproductive life and your yeah. lady bits. Like, I don't know. Right. What? How does that make any sense? Anyway, it was dumb. It was a rumor. But as far as I'm concerned, I feel like that is like peak celebrity status. Like That's I have reached pretty much it. I have reached the the, the the you know the arrived. the mountaintop. Yes, once, I have once arrived. Once the pregnancy Thank rumors you. start. Thank you. Yes, you, Thank you. you've reached you reached the top of celebrityness. So celebriosity, yeah, celebrityhood. Sure. I don't know. I don't know what's the totally pro proper term is there. Whatever you want to um, call it, but sure. But, uh, but, but <laughs> Catalina is currently with child. Uh, it's a no, beautiful, stop that. Beautiful, no. <laughs> beautiful time in a woman's life when she's with child. Uh, no, you know, <laughs> none of that. When is we a have great children. middle name if it's a boy. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking something like Enrique Ren Delano, <laughs> like that. I'm toss, I'm just spitballing. If you like it, keep it. If you don't, toss it back. Uh, mm -hmm. I can I can wind up another pitch. Um, Jonathan, you mentioned that you had things to say today. That's exciting. That's always exciting. Uh, you were a bit under the weather last time. Had the Tesla flu, uh, as we call it. You know, just motion sickness from all the Tesla <laughs> racing, taking the inside curb instead of the outside, which I suggested. Um, do you wear a helmet when you drive the Tesla? I don't know. I don't have one, so. <laughs> I wasn't paying any attention to what you were saying. Okay, good. good. <laughs> so it's I'm, just another normal day. Yeah, Maybe. we're going to imagine that you do wear a helmet when you drive the Tesla. Uh, <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't me driving. You're talking oh, about that, the other day. You're talking about Tuesday when. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, when you, you got Because so, I drive sickness. like a normal person. This is Jason who drives like a freaking drive, maniac. Drive like a maniac. Yeah. Um, he's allowed. He's allowed. You know, it, we, the rest, the rest of us mortals don't know much about the Tesla experience. So um, I just figured that you have to wear a helmet when you, when you drive one. So you absolutely don't. So Jonathan, you're, you're talking about, we're talking about, you know, turning around that client who has a negative experience you know, into, into a positive, perhaps we'll share our individual stories. Perhaps we won't. I mean, it could go either way, but you said something <laughs> that was very interesting. It could be like, who knows? You said something that was very interesting, but what if they weren't having a negative experience? They're just not an adequate communicator, or maybe we're not an adequate listener. You know, we could be poor listeners too. Um, could you, could you expand on that? I never know if the words expand or expound. Uh, should I say, can you expand on that? Or should I say, could you expound on that? Uh, does it matter? Expand. It sounds better to me. Expand, well, no, I, I feel I. that's a good question. Amber, can you look that up while we're talking? I, I feel like expand is like to grow something. Expound is like to talk deeper on something. That, that's what I think. That's what I think. Anyway, could you talk some more about that, please? Yeah, let's, let's, let's dumb down the language here because none of us know what it means. Uh, <laughs> I, I believe very strongly in one of the principles through which I live my life mm. is, is, a, is a specific lens that I try to see everything through. And it's really hard, but I, I, I default to trust mm. and I default to good intention, mm -hmm. which means unless I actually have hard evidence that something is untrustworthy or mm -hmm. ill-intentioned, I assume that it's not. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, we might get a message that sounds harsh. We might get a message that sounds out of nowhere. We might see something that looks like somebody is saying something about us or something we do or whatever it is. And I see it all the time with our mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. And... I mean, maybe they think that I'm a horrible person. 
Uh, it certainly happened once or twice or three or four or five, six, six times. But <laughs> most of the time, the reality of it is um, the person is just not a strong communicator. Mm. I mean, we were not people of a certain age, i.e. all of us, basically all adults right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not brought up with our primary mode of communication being what's called asynchronous. Basically, there's, there's two ways to communicate, synchronous and asynchronous. Synchronous is like mm. we are now, right? Like I'm talking to you, you talk back to me. There's not much time. I mean, I should pause maybe for one or two seconds between when you speak and when I speak, but then I wouldn't be able to get a word in because Carolina's right. always going to talk. So I just, I just talk over people. But with True. asynchronous conversation, it's like a text message, it's a Facebook messenger, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a comment thread where somebody, has, somebody sends a message and then really you have as long as you want to be able to respond to that mm -hmm. message. Most asynchronous communication that we do um, also eliminates a really important part of communication, which is tone. You right. know, you, you can send voice messages back and forth, but most of the time we don't. Um, most of the time, you know, we're talking about text message communication in a variety of different mediums. And the reality of it is, most people you speak to are really bad asynchronous communicators. Right. They just, they are just not skilled at actually communicating the nuance and the, the emotion and the meaning behind their words. Either they're in a rush or, um, they just, they, they simply haven't read it over, over and over again. It's actually really important. I practice a lot, like even in a comment thread, that's where I like practice my writing now um, and, and try to write really, really well. Because you are writing, assuming that the other person doesn't know what you know. We right. all kind of have stories that we tell ourselves about what's going on about something. And the other person that we're communicating with has a completely different story. And so you have to kind of take that into account whenever you're, whenever you're taking in a message. And oftentimes, almost always, the, the reality is um, the person communicating with you does not have all of the information. And so the best thing to do when you receive a message that you deem as being perhaps negative, perhaps combative, mm -hmm. is to respond with curiosity. And um, what you will most often find, and this is why I say like, like default to good faith, what you will very often find is the person actually wasn't trying to be rude. Very few people actually try to be rude. Right. <laughs> you know, they might come off that way, but a lot of the time it's how you receive it. It's like, it's like some crap that, that you have that you're working through mm -hmm. that makes you interpret what they said as being rude especially if it's a text message. I mean, words can be interpreted a lot of different ways, particularly if the person writing them isn't that skilled. Words can be interpreted. A very skilled writer can, can make sure that his or her words are interpreted a certain way, um, the right way. But even then, people on the internet don't read. My favorite was uh, two days ago, somebody put a message. It was actually really interesting. He put up a, a post. Um, this isn't, you know, this doesn't go down to like responding to people who might be upset with you or whatever it is, but I just think it's a good example of like people not communicating effectively on the internet and what you should do in response to it. And so somebody put up a, a post on the internet and it was a friend of mine and, um, and it was a picture of a whole bunch of white and black toddlers and babies hugging each other. And um, what he said is, uh, we're, born, we're not born racist. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. why do we grow up that way? And I, and I responded and I, act, and I said, actually, it's the exact opposite. From an evolutionary psychology point of view, all of us are born racist. <laughs> it's a tribal thing. <laughs> all of us don't right. like people who are not like us. Like that's literally, that's literally how we're born. I'm not saying this to condone racism in any way. Like racism is terrible. It's shit. But like, but like racism is actually not a learned behavior. It's a behavior that needs to be unlearned. And so I just responded with that. I was like, actually, like, like, don't, don't take this the wrong way. Like racism is shit. Like it's awful. But, um, it, it actually works the exact opposite than what you said. Have 
How did that communication go, John? And uh, well, no, I mean, he was he was cool with it. He's just like he's just like this is why I stick to like stuff I know. <laughs> um, but somebody else responded, and they're like, "Well, in my opinion, in my experience, it's different." There we go. <laughs> it's just like like literally she said that i was like I, I just i just walked away i didn't even respond but and so that's like that's a really good example of the internet it's like no like this is actually what the science says it doesn't mean that we condone this behavior but if you want to understand this behavior this is literally what the body of research says right um and uh and your opinion quite frankly is irrelevant <laughs> In, in and, terms of the research. And, and, and anyway, so like, but that's, that's like, hey, science says this, but I think, and then the, the, the effective response there, um, if you want to communicate well, is just to walk away. Because you're not debating that person, right? You're leaving the information there potentially for onlookers to come to an educated decision of where they might stand on a thing to help to understand it. Um, I don't know. I just thought that was kind of funny. It was just so blatant. It's like, no, actually, like, here's what the, here's what well, research says. Well, but my is, opinion, but like that, that doesn't matter. Well, this, <laughs> like, this is what happens in terms of communication between us and clients too, right? Like, it's so easy to, it's so easy to interpret some, some response or communication from a client as, as displeasure when it could actually just be fact or as fact when it could actually be just displeasure. Like there's, there's so much, there's so there's subtlety in the nuance of communication yes. anyway. And you lose that uh, online. We're dealing with online communication. And a lot of us, I know Kero included probably Amber, we probably communicate way more via text, some form of text messaging with our online clients, as opposed to, conversations like we're not getting on we're not all getting on 30 zoom calls with all 30 clients and look at my face and hear my tone and whatever you know it's and a lot of times it's quick communication too which could further complicate it not just quick rushed communication rushed communication right so so which how does seems that very short which is right rushed communication right when you're with the person is understood Right, we can understand that you're rushed because we hear it in your voice, we see it in your in your behaviors and in your body. We we watch you run out the door, whatever it is, we get it, we understand it, and we take that into account when we're taking in that that message. But rushed communication when you're taking in a text message, we don't see those things. There's none of that, mm-hmm. right? So now it's just now it's just devoid of all context, right? Very short, abrupt communication which immediately comes off as very rude, which is why I think the first step whenever you're, you're going into this is just, like I say, default to good faith, default to trust. And by the way, default to trust is a very good general rule to live by for everything. Um, if you go through your life thinking that everybody's going to cheat you, it's a miserable way to go through life um the vast majority like our entire world is based off of trusting things we don't understand and can't manage right we trust that people are going to follow the rules of traffic we trust that people aren't going to steal it's actually pretty easy to like petty theft and whatever it is right Right. um most people don't and there are a few bad eggs who do maybe in the bad circumstances or maybe they're just bad people but it's such a small amount that it is way easier and and manageable for society to operate based off of the default of trust and i i i implore you to operate yourself that way too it is a much better way to live to um give things away, operate freely, don't overly protect yourself, knowing that there might be somebody who's going to take advantage of you and you just dust it off your shoulder. Because right. the amount of time and effort and frustration you're going to save in not thinking about that happening to you all the time is going to far outweigh the few times where it does happen that are going to be relatively insignificant. Um, it's just a way better way to live your life. But that's a, that's a sidebar. This podcast is made possible by viewers like you. Except you're not viewers, you're listeners. Um, okay, well I guess a word from our sponsors.
If you're a fitness nutrition coach that's looking to master online coaching so that you can help more people, make more money, and have more freedom, then the Online Trainer Academy can help. OTA gives you the framework, knowledge, and support to have predictable success with your online coaching business. From marketing to business development to how to assess and motivate your clients online, it is constantly updated and refreshed to keep up with a dynamic market. Not only that, OTA is proven. In seven years, we've helped over 30,000 coaches in 87 countries go online. Truth is, we know what works, so you can get right to the success part. And in case you're busy working a full-time job or you're a full-time parent, know that you can go at your own pace. There's no deadlines to complete OTA and you have lifetime access. That said, if you are ready to make a rapid change and finish the course in the next 8 to 12 weeks, you can expect to invest 3 to 5 hours each week on the program. And here's the best part. If you join today, you will make an extra $1,000 a month in 90 days or I'll give you your money back. So if you're ready to build the fitness business you want and make the money you deserve, go to onlinetrainer.com slash academy to enroll today. And I hope to see you in there. Are you still trying to pick your online training software? If so, let me make this easy for you. Go with PT Distinction. It's truly the best, and I'm not just saying that because they're a sponsor. We actually use PT Distinction for our own online fitness business, online trainer coaching, and we're really happy with it. From onboarding to programming to client communication, PT Distinction has everything you need to run your online fitness business smoothly, and it's super simple to use. Now, normally they offer a free 30-day trial, but as a listener of the online trainer show, you get a free 60-day trial so you can make sure you love them before spending a dime. If you want to deliver first-class service to your clients while reclaiming your time, then visit onlinetrainer.com slash PTD to sign up for your free 60-day trial today. So the first step is that. I mean, talk about Yasmin in our OTA2 group, right? She had this happen. She posted a message. Uh, this is Yasmin in Egypt, posted a message of one of her clients. She basically said, or I think it was a, no, it wasn't a client. It was a prospect. It was somebody who she was getting on the phone and they both, I, I, here's what happened. I, I, I remember it more specifically now. She, um, she was text messaging somebody and they were going to get on the phone and it was good lead for her program. And, um, and they both had to cancel actually the same appointment for the phone because they both had kid stuff come yeah. up at the same time. Sorry. And so then the person basically was like pretty short with her responses and said, you know, kind of just tell me what the price is. Just tell me what's in the program. And she, and I, she posted in the group basically looking for advice because you don't really want to do that because immediately now you've, you've lost the sale. Yeah, like absolutely. there's basically no chance that you're going to make it. And all hmm. that uh, suggestion to her was you don't actually know, like you're a mom, Yasmin is a single mom of three, right? Like, like you're a mom, you know that you're often rushed when you're text messaging. So right. don't assume that this person is being rude at all. Um, respond back with curiosity. Like you have, the, you know, we have the scripts that we provide of why you don't provide price. You know, there's a bunch of different options. I don't quite know what's right for you. I don't even know if any of them are right for you. Right. Um, that's why I want to have a chat with you type thing. And, uh, but it's really hard when it's happening to us, right? We think that this person is like coming at us in some way. And, uh, and, and it's very important to check ourselves and say, no, they're probably not. They might be. Mm -hmm. And if they are, there's really nothing you can do about it anyway. You respond with curiosity. They would joke again. You wish them well. You go about your day. Right, right. Uh, I like so to that's, say, come that's, at me, that's, bro. Yeah, come at me, bro. Come at that's me, bro. Like. At that's Sounds usually what I say. I yeah. I probably type that. Yeah, I've got that as like a quick response, actually. Right. <laughs> Just come at me, bro. And I have it in a couple different languages too. That way, if somebody, yeah, that way, if somebody that translates. Is, yeah, that way, if somebody's Spanish, that I just want to make sure they understand. You know what I'm saying? How would you say that in Spanish, Carolina? Uh, like, why like, come at me, bro? Come at me, bro. But like angry. Oh my gosh, I don't know, because that would be like slang. I don't think. What would be the equivalent? Like, what uh, would you say to somebody? Uh, oh, come I'm on. frightened to hear what Carolina. Yeah, come on, like echate pa acá or or or, or ven, ven pa acá. like like come on over here, like ven pa acá. But, but that would be like, uh, what did you say? Epeka? Ven. Ven. Para, but you shorten it pa because it's slang. Yeah, okay. Oh. Paca. Yeah. 
Oh, like, Vampire Diaries. Like, but that would be, like, be like with the attitude, right? You got to throw your shoulders yeah. in. I was going to say, you could say that like nice. You could be like, Ben Paracas, you know? Yeah, I can be just like a regular. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that to Allison today. I knew, like ben <laughs> oh, God. I knew it wasn't the right tone because <laughs> Kettle didn't use her hands enough. Nobody um, wanted to know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The ears are burning. So, 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 so we, we, all right, we've, we've arrived at the point we, we know whether it's a miscommunication or not. Like we, we have, we, we have, we have stepped into the reality yeah. that yes, our online client is now upset. We've, we've got an issue. Um, they're disgruntled for some reason. Um, so, so now what? what are, let's start with this. What are some of the reasons I want to ask you guys, what are some of the reasons that they might be upset or disgruntled? I like the word disgruntled a lot. It's, it's a good word. <laughs> Ke- <laughs> Ke- Keto, would you like, would you like to lead the way? Um, um like legitimate reasons why a client might yeah, be upset? Well, yeah, legitimate what, what or illegitimate. Yeah, it could be, yeah, could yeah. be either. I mean, it doesn't matter. If, if they're upset, they're upset. Whether right. it's legitimate in your eyes or not is kind of irrelevant. We have a saying in customer service for our company that it doesn't matter if it's our fault, it's our problem. For sure. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter whether it's legitimate or not. Why would people be upset? Um, they can be upset if they feel like you're not delivering what you mm-hmm. promised in the beginning, like what the, you're not holding your end of the agreement. Uh, so they can mismanaged, be mismanaged, mismanaged. Expectations. Uh, expectations. Yeah. Okay. Or unmet expectations because it does happen that a, that a coach actually doesn't deliver what they said they would, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They set an expectation that they couldn't fulfill. Another mm-hmm. one would be uh, when- I, It's it, never happened with, with us. <laughs> never happened with the Online Training Academy in, in, in <laughs> right. you know, 30, we, four, I don't even know how many customers we, we have each year now. 30, 40, 50,000 customers. We've never had a single case. I believe you, but every, every coach listening to this is not the, the OTA <laughs> or the PTDC. So yeah. I'm sure for some people it yeah. has been the okay, case. Okay, what else? What else? Um, another one would be uh, frustration upon not moving as fast as they were mm-hmm. in their minds. Mm-hmm. And that is a thing of expectation within themselves. Yeah. But they kind of like blame it on, on you or the program or it's not working for me. And you're like, well, maybe. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's that you have unrealistic expectations. So you got to revisit that. Or the Um, dovetail on that, something that we experienced with the online trainer coaching a fair bit in the first beta group is people expected there to be a lot more variation in their program than there was because they, they had expectations of what programming they thought should be based off of what they've seen, not realizing that the majority of programming that you see out there in the world is actually pretty shit program. It's trash. <laughs> yeah. it's trash. And it's like, it's like, no, you're untrained. Like the first six to eight weeks is nervous system adaptation. Um, you should not do that much variation. Right. Um, mm-hmm. You know, in terms of prior, in terms of like things that cause positive adaptations, like variation is like number four down the list, which means you basically ignore it when you're programming. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and so, but we didn't come out at the beginning and make sure that we educated people coming into the program enough. So then they get their program and they'd be like, I'm doing five workouts a week. Why is there only three different workouts? Right. And why am I repeating mm-hmm. them all twice a week or one and a half times a week for a month? Right. You know, Keto, it, so- it sounds like uh, most of what you, it sounds like most of what you're mentioning is sort of in the category of managed expectations. Even what yeah. Jonathan just said, yeah. like I'm having a hard time thinking of anything that's outside of the realm of it all boils down to that expectation. Exactly. Like, because it's either missed, mismanaged expect like unrealistic expectations mm-hmm. or unmet expectations. You, right. you yourself did set the expectation up for the client and then you failed to deliver right. to what you so promised. Talk about, so, this is funny because we actually had um, Amber's a part of this. Uh, we call them task forces with our company. Uh, cause I just like the word task force. And whenever we, we write it, we always make sure that we write it in all caps. So it's pronounced task force. And <laughs> I so, love it. um, I love it. we, uh, we have a, a customer experience journey mapping task force going on right now <laughs> where we have a, where we have an, uh, an outside consultant who's working with us. And we had a big, uh, whiteboard mapping session for this task force yesterday. And, um, <laughs> Amber was a part of it. And Amber, something that you, a suggestion that you gave was a really good one, I think that fits really good in here of um, something that we're probably going to incorporate 
in OTA moving forward. Uh, well, not right away, but it's on our list of things to think about to help um, people recognize wins. Do you remember what it was? The light, the light's gone dim in Amber's eyes. For this, well, it's that something care. that it's something that you said. I just didn't lay it up well, um, but it was your suggestion, so I'm not. Well, I'll, I will take credit for it. But <laughs> of course you will, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember anyway. Right. Yeah, no, that's good. right. Um, of course you no, will. Asking people when they first start the program, what would a win look like to you? Mm, mm-hmm. Because we don't know. One thing that we found with all of the research we've done with OTA is a win is different for honestly so many different people. A win could be as little as they put a post up promoting their business on social media because they've been mm-hmm. scared to do that. Yeah. Right. For years. And now they finally have the confidence to do it. That could be a win. A win could be the first client. A win could be a survey response. A win could be a client result. But like we don't know what that is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that we're looking at incorporating, you can absolutely take that with your clients too, is like day one, hey, just so I know, what would a big, what would a win look like to you? And then immediately now they can identify when they when they get the win. It's less about you guiding them. It may change something you do, it may not change something you do. It's right. more about making sure that they recognize the progress that they're making. Yeah. In a way that's meaningful to them. So is there something you want to add to that, Amber? Or was that did I put words in your mouth appropriately? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're just talking about aha moments and like trying to to elevate those. Um, because there's so many different positive experiences that it's easy to just sail over those. So how can we elevate those? So that way we, we get the most out of that moment with them. I, I love it. So, so let's, let's bring it back around to, to, to topic. So we've discussed the fact that, and we've got like what, five minutes, three minutes, two minutes, it's like eight minutes. Okay. That's what it's seven. Amber said seven. So it was, it was eight when we started talking about how many minutes. Yeah. Like, and then yeah. I was, <laughs> And now we're at now six. It's down to six. So, <laughs> so we talked about the differentiation between re- like communication and the person absolute, actually being upset. We discovered together, like the Star Trek Enterprise, that I love Star Trek. We discovered together together that a lot of the a lot of what makes people upset is sort of in Jonathan's flash and his money. Uh, a lot of what makes people upset is the is the mismanaged you know, expectation, right? So we can, we can head off a lot of this on the front end by being very clear. The great tip from Amber about, you know, asking the actual person that you're working with, what would a win look like to them on the front end? Uh, but let's say we did all that. Let's play devil's advocate. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to poke the, poke the beehive here because I'm a beehive poker. Um, poke it, that was weird. <laughs> that was weird. Um, <laughs> poke the beehive. I do not want to poke a beehive. So <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, so let's say it's n- neither one of those two things. Let's say really customers ticked off. Like and you did it. Oh, buddy. So like now what? So how, when the customer's mad, now what? When they're angry, now, now what do I do? Now what do they do? Like any suggestions there? What, what have you guys done in the past? Because I never make people angry. Kettle's, this is where I duck out. I am not getting this. <laughs> I am I'm great crazy. at this. Okay, yeah. so I have my past employment history back in Mexico included working uh, quality, like customer service for a call center. Really? So we had like the worst of the worst, like screaming clients. So what kind um, of call center? Like what were you doing? Um, that one was for like international calls. Like this was you got to remember before cell phones are all the thing, all everything that they are right now. It was for international calls and uh, calling cards and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Oh, and, you were doing uh, this in Spanish too? Like um, yeah, it Spanish? no, it, yeah, it was bilingual. No, yeah, it was bilingual. It was from all over the world. Uh, all kinds okay. of accents, all kinds of, uh, you know, backgrounds and cultures and everything, right? So we would get the worst kind of like screaming in your ear clients. And so to survive that job, essentially, because it can be pretty, you know, <laughs> soul sucking, I turned it into a game that I was like, the, you know, you the angrier <laughs> the client is, 
It's like, I will be damned if they are not apologizing to me by the end of this call for how they treated me in the beginning. So it was one of those, like, wrap them in honey. It's like, oh my yeah. God, like this What'd you do? Give me some, give me some like actionable things that um, you did. How did, like, you, how did you wrap them in honey after, yes, after when they booked the beehive? How yeah, did you yeah. they're screaming, they're swearing, they're wishing you weird. death, like whatever. And you're like, you, first of all, completely justify their anger. Because mm-hmm. it doesn't, I don't need mm-hmm. to understand what their situation is or to think that they're overreacting. If they are that angry, they are that angry and you honor that. And it's it like, it doesn't matter whether you appreciate exactly. them, whether you, whether, so it doesn't matter whether you agree with them or not. Mm-hmm. What matters is that you appreciate that they're upset. I love that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So first that. of all, you completely yeah. tune into that. It's like, oh my God, I so get it. I understand why you're this upset. I am so sorry you are going through this. Apologize too. Mm -hmm. Like, even if it's not your fault, some people really want to play the ego game. Well, I didn't do anything wrong. It doesn't (laughs) matter. You're already losing there. Like, it doesn't matter. Just apologize because that goes a long way. And so in there, you're already creating a connection. The moment you do that, people start like, oh, 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 okay. Well, well, okay. How are you going to make it right? Like you totally flip the script on them. It takes down their armor, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you flip the script okay. on them, right? So, so now they're disarmed upon your, you know, the the magical beauty of your sweet, sweet words. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, the um, magical beauty of your sweet, sweet words. Let's get that on a quote card when this. Let's episode get that ends. on a quote I need, card. I need to see that on on Instagram stories. <laughs> Yeah. The magical beauty of your sweet, sweet words. <laughs> no context, nothing else said on the quote card. And a picture of Keto. That's all, that's all we need. I, like, I didn't what, need to what kind of businesses are we running yeah, here? Yeah, what? Yeah. what? <laughs> I'm fine with it. I feel totally comfortable with your image on that quote. Go, go, so, go, so, go, um, go ahead. So you've, you've, you've seduced them with the magical beauty of your sweet, sweet words. Continue. <laughs> and then, and then you actually and effectively go in and make it, make it, make it better for them. Mm-hmm. And you surpass what their expectation was in getting this problem fixed. So if they were thinking like, if you're going to make it up to me, I want you to to give me my money back. Like I want you to refund mm-hmm. me for this calling card that I spent. Mm-hmm. You're going to do that. And more than that. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're absolutely right. It is within my power. This is what we do for you. And you know what, because you were put through this horrible situation that left you feeling this way. And there was no need for that in your holiday. Let me go ahead and throw this in as well for you. And they're like, whoa, what? Like Sweet complete. The and then, way. and then they're like, oh my God, you're so, I'm so sorry for how I was so mm-hmm. angry. I can't believe, I, you know what? You're being so and then, helpful. And then you ring the big bell. Yes, and I'm like, ding, 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 I win. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a solid process. So let's just recap it. Number one, let, let, let all the steam out of the engine. Like mm-hmm. just let it go. Let, let, mm-hmm. let that locomotive run until it runs out of coal. Like don't interrupt it. Don't, don't say, please don't say things like simmer down. Oh calm, gosh! Calm yes. yourself. You right. know, oh, no. that's why I always go wrong. Yeah, that's this. Is, yeah, this. Need, don't you know make Jonathan you know, good. You just need to simmer down. Just yeah, simmer yeah. Down. yeah. You need to calm down, down right now. Um, Nobody's gonna down. calm down. <laughs> so, so, and and then after it, then after they simmer down, you know, you're just gonna be pleasant in your speech, right? The the magical beauty of your sweet sweet words. Yeah. Um, you know, so being very nice and kind and and. Uh, and making space for them yes. to articulate how they feel, yes. returning that with with sweet sweet verbiage, yes, but bi- sweet bilingual verbiage, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, and making them feel comfortable, and then exceed their expectation. Once Going you once beyond. you find out what actually solves it, mm-hmm. do that. And if you have the ability to do more than that, do, do more. more than that. Yes. Yeah. So, so I'll, I'll, I will add one last thing to that, and then I think we all got to go. Is, yeah, I do. Uh, something that we do at our company, Amber, you know this, is uh, we follow a, a model called Carpe Defect, which a couple of my friends um, uh, passed along to me. Um, and basically, the premise is you don't actually know what would make it right in the customer's eyes. Mm-hmm. So instead of saying, hey, I'm going to refund your calling code and then I'm going to give you this thing, you actually say to them, hey, what do you think? Mm-hmm. You know, what, yeah, what, for sure. what would you it like me to, to come... do for you? Or in yeah. our case, like what, 
um, hey, you know, we used the used co salesman trick. Hey, you know, I spoke to John and he feels awful <laughs> about this. Uh, and and he really wanted to do something special for you. Um, and we actually have a couple a couple options. I mean, of course, we're going to refund you, but we wanted to do something special. You know, would you like A, B, or C? Mm-hmm. And uh, and and at least then it, it kind of gives them a choice. It's like an airline. You know, don't don't immediately like book somebody on another trip. It's like, hey, what would you like? Would you prefer an upgrade to first class on your trip? Would you mm-hmm. whatever? Yeah, let it come from them and then do more. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I love yeah. it. I love it. So we've solved all your problems once again here today on the online trader show. Is we do we it. Do. We do it twice a week, every week. <laughs> this, and it's this, is why we, this is why we like, own the big box. Everybody. Yeah, pretty much. John's it's got just, a stack of money. Amber's got the delts out. Kato's hair is radiant and I've got a hat on. All is right with the world. The universe has been balanced today. We have once again exercised the demons. So for another episode of the Online Trainer Show, this has been episode 30-something. We're in the 30s. I don't even know. know. Nobody knows that. We gave up. Uh, uh, Amber says 40. We're 40 40 today. today. Oh, man. So the AARP cars are right around the corner. Um, (laughs) OnlineTrader.com podcast is where you can find the show notes. Uh, send us, uh, send us all your artwork of uh, anal glands from be- beaver anal glands, <laughs> and um, let it come to you. Please be and we'll, and we'll see you. We'll see make you sure, next Make time. sure you send those pictures to amber at the ptdc.com. <laughs> yes, please, please. Make Amber's sure just she's, to her. she's yeah. jonesing for your a- beaver anal gland artwork. Right? <laughs> yes. So we'll catch you guys next time. Uh, jingle, jingle. This is the online trainer show, trainer show, trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. <laughs>